Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Ibo. Make sure you guys download the app, follow me, and talk to me on there. Hey guys, welcome back to the Blair White Project. So, it is early in the morning. I never uh, film the show this early, but for some reason, I have a ton of energy. I'm usually not a morning person, but I'm ready to fucking go. Try not to swear though. Oh my God. Damn it. Really? Okay, so... I'm going to go off in this one because I'm really feeling some type of way lately and I've been having actually very deep conversations while intoxicated with my friends about this issue because it just seems to be escalating. There seems to be no solution in sight and both sides seem to not comprehend each other's side in the slightest. So I want to attempt to unpack this. And I know I've talked about the family friendly drag show topic quite a bit over the years, but it's like, this is the thing. When you talk about an issue for long enough, you see it just like grow and expand and get worse. <laughs> I feel like there's so many things that I've talked about over the years on my channel. Like I used to talk about children transitioning. At the time there was like five examples. Now there's like thousands of examples and detransitioners and the entire like medical system is pushing it. Um, Back when I used to talk about like, you know, child drag queens and family friendly drag shows, it was in like 2016 where there was like two examples. It was like Desmond is amazing and maybe one or two others. And now it's an every weekend occurrence, specifically in Texas, which I don't quite understand. You would think you'd be hearing about this happening in like California and New York all the time, but it's a Texas thing. So there was one in particular recently that was the most egregious one I've seen. And I actually had a couple supporters that were at this show who were like reporting back to me because they wanted me to talk about it. This was a family friendly drag show in Austin, Texas. This was a tour um, from multiple drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race. So let's just let's just watch this. Awesome mom for bringing their kid out to a family friendly drag show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. of my father's boss oh. in my father's office. What's your favorite part? Nothing. Well, I slept with my stepfather's co-worker in our RV over Thanksgiving. So, here's the thing. It would be one thing if the drag queen community, the LGBT community could ever just once, like just once admit that it was inappropriate. Like I, the problem here is I only see doubling down. And I don't personally believe that any sane human being could look at that video for which these are just clips. This is probably like an hour or two long show, by the way. My supporters that were there, all of them reported that there was a ton of children present. There were children in the front row, which you can see in the video. And that those little segments where they were talking to like fans in the audience, every single fan that spoke was just speaking about a sex story that they had with children chilling there. I also heard, unsurprisingly, there were no fathers really present. <laughs> big, big, big shocker. Um, that it was mostly just like white lived out mothers. And here's the thing. That's not surprising because I know the exact archetype of the white busybody. And you can be offended if I say white. It is what it is. If it's just factual, it's just factual. It's white liberal mothers who are doing this. Black mothers are not playing this shit. Let's just be real. The black community is a lot more conservative in this sense. And you know what? When it comes to this, rightfully so. So <laughs> the issue here is that a lot of people don't want to just be blunt about is the reason that's happening is for a few reasons. And I'm going to break down those reasons. 
why this seems to just be a continued issue. The first one is the fact that, again, these white liberal mothers whose biggest struggle in life is getting out of bumblefuck suburb they're from, escaping their evil conservative dad, that's the biggest struggle in life, are so mesmerized by men in makeup that their defenses are completely like removed. They are completely disarmed when they see a man wearing mascara. That even if they're doing something incredibly sexual, incredibly inappropriate around their child, this is them. <gasps> like that's them. <gasps> like they just cannot believe that they're in the presence of something so miraculous and special as a man in makeup. Because these white lived out mothers, and you know what? I learned this moving to Texas. So in California, it's like the rebels are like the right leaning people, the center right people, the Republicans, right? Conservatives are the rebels in California. Here in Texas, the liberals feel strongly about being liberal because they're escaping from, you know, they're living in Austin and they're escaping from bumblefuck Texas and they just hate their conservative parents and they're rebelling and they're trying to raise their kids in a way they didn't get to be raised. And the results of that is anything goes. So that's that's reason number one. These white liberal mothers with no struggle who have convinced themselves that raising a child to not be homophobic must mean listening to sex stories at a drag show. Okay, that's reason number one. Reason number two, and this is going to be incredibly taboo to talk about, and I'm going to preface it with saying that I'm saying it with love because y'all know I ride with gay people. I ride with trans people. I don't care who says otherwise. I'm part of the LGBT community. It is what it is. A lot of gay people are very damaged. And when I say they're damaged, I mean a lot of gay people, especially, you know, in the older age groups, you know, millennials and beyond. It's like they didn't have easy childhoods. I was part of kind of the last generation of LGBT kids that really got bullied in school. You know, half of my family are, you know, traditional, like conservatives, like did not understand the trans thing and don't even talk to me. A lot of LGBT people grow up to be incredibly damaged because going through that trauma of having students, teachers, the entire school system, half of your family going against you is damaging. It damages the brain. Okay. A lot of older LGBT people want kids, rightfully so, that are LGBT to have a different childhood than they had. And that's an honorable thing because I don't think anyone who's sane or a kind person supports like kids being bullied for being LGBT. Like that's disgusting. Why would you do that? However, what we're seeing is this excess of like, we are so obsessed with like being progressive and making sure no kids go through what we went through that we're literally taking them to drag shows. And it's like, Really, as I've always said, taking a kid to a drag show to teach them to be respectful of gay people is like taking them to a strip club to be respectful of women. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Especially when you consider like most, like the overwhelming majority, like 99% of gay men in me are not going to be drag queens. I don't understand it. I think that until people kind of like this is hard to articulate. I have never really talked about this out loud, but until people that like are not LGBT sort of like grant, you know what? I'm wrong. There's been enough discussion. Like I was going to say something completely, but I don't even agree with the point is we're battling with the trauma of like older millennial and like Gen Xers, gay people who want a different like childhood for their kids and it's just coming out in this really effed up way. And it doesn't make it okay by any means. Like, I don't understand how you can take your kid to this and think that it's okay. I don't get it. And, you know, from the people that I know that were there and confirming is that it was worse than the clips, that no parents were even blinking an eye. No one said anything. No one had any issues. And it's like, wow. I don't understand it. And you see people saying, well, oh, conservatives take their kids to Hooters. It's like, is that a conservative thing, first of all? Second of all, they're clothed at Hooters. They're clothed. They're not talking about sex. 
And then they'll bring up, oh, well, conservatives take their kids to child beauty pageants. I'm pretty sure it's been a national discussion for years about how creepy like child beauty pageants are where like the little girls are like dressed up like little dolls and in the outfits and stuff like I'm pretty sure people have been having that discussion for a long time and that's kind of been taboo but they're not letting this be taboo when it really should be to me it's the simplest thing in the world to like if you're gonna have a performance like this don't make it all ages Make it an 18 plus show. It's that simple. And these drag queens and gay people would save themselves so much backlash and so much animosity if they just put an 18 plus on their show. And these parents, it's like, how about you be a fucking parent? Like, I don't understand. Shout out to people who were not stupid enough to think this is all ages and actually family friendly. Anyways. Elon Musk teaches, teases rather new Fauci revelations and future Twitter files installment. So listen, also, I want to go back and make one more point about the family friendly drag shows, the groomer discourse. What I see is two sides that are like, like walls just smashing against each other, not giving at all. Because when a leftist hears the word groomer, they assume conservatives are calling all LGBT people groomers. Okay, I'm going to need you to grab hold of a little bit of nuance. That same nuance you use to convince yourself there are like a thousand genders. We're going to need a tiny bit of that to understand that people are not calling all gay people groomers. Okay, I have very rarely seen that sentiment expressed. Like ever. In fact, groomer is a term that used to be made for straight people, like it was a straight term. It was like people were calling like Onision a groomer. Like, like that's when I first started hearing the word groomer was like to call people like Onision a groomer. So leftists hear that we mean all gay people are groomers. And then when a right wing person sees the pushback against the word groomer, right wingers are like, oh, leftists must support pedophilia. It's like, which is not like that. <laughs> I don't even blame them for making that take because I'd rather be on the side of caution and be like, okay, they're all like, I understand more so the side of like, okay, they're all pedos if they're making excuses than I do like, you're calling everyone pedos because no one's saying that. <laughs> Literally no one's saying that. Um, anyway, that's all the point I wanted to make about that. It just really sucks that there's no amount of nuance. And also like gay people, a lot of gay people are very far removed. One of my supporters said that he was having a discussion with someone at this show and asking them, like, do you think this is appropriate for kids? And the gay guy was like, yes. I mean, they teach about marriage in school. So that's teaching about straight stuff. The, teaching the concept of marriage is not inherently sexual, moron. What we just saw in that clip was inherently sexual. So I think a lot of gay people are far removed for like what's appropriate for kids because of the effed up childhoods many of them lived. And also because like a lot of gay people, most gay people don't have like children and family. They're not involved with kids on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't have kids in their life. And so they're kind of removed from like what is appropriate for kids, right? So it's like just, it's like the culture, it's just, I can't. Elon Musk teases new Fauci revelations in future Twitter files installment. This is what I'm, hype for miss girl this is what i need in my life must previously tweeted that he changed his pronouns to prosecute fauci so he's getting a lot of backlash for this but i'm here for it because if there's anyone who knows the behaviors of the medical establishment and fauci and the health experts in terms of censorship and what they did during the panini in terms of like social media and banning people for disagreeing with them or being correct about things too early when they say things like ivermectin might work like the vaccine might not stop transmission there were a ton of people who were just banned off social media for the sin of being correct too early right like they're just right about that before the health experts were right about that um, so it's looking like Elon is, he said, will this be, someone tweeted him and said, will this be explained in a new Twitter files part? And he said, yes. 
So I, I'm here for that. Republicans are pressing forward with investigations into the judgment of Fauci, specifically over his, his connections to the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic. Fauci himself has agreed that it is important to uncover what caused the pandemic, noting that while he personally believes it was naturally derived, the possibility of a lab leak is still on the table. He has repeatedly denied his agency-funded so-called gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which involves manipulating a virus to make it more transmissible for research purposes. But a lot of people, if you're tuned into the right algorithms, have maybe seen a few videos on Miss Twitter of Fauci talking about gain-of-function research. Anyways, I'm here for this because the fact that so much misinformation was spread by the health experts. F this narrative that misinformation was being spread by just all right-wing people or people. It's like people who were clued into the vaccine not stopping transmission, who were clued into ivermectin might be appropriate in some instance, like, and trying to get the word out and then getting banned. So many doctors were banned for just having a different opinion than Fauci that it's like, Okay, reveal reveal the discourse that was happening behind the scenes between the government and Twitter to censor people in relation to COVID because I'm here for it and I don't want it to ever happen again. By the way, it's like with Elon revealing all the government interference with Twitter and how the government was in bed with Twitter to censor people and how the FBI was literally paying them to censor people, it's like, what people don't understand, or maybe they do, I don't want to make, I don't want to demean anyone's intelligence here, but like what people should understand is like Twitter was probably even during that like thick censorship period, for which it still is kind of going on, was probably the least bad of the platforms doing it. Like I specifically remember so many times there were things that I could tweet that I could not post. Like I, y'all know if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, M S B L A I R E W H I T E, Ms. Blair White. Um, y'all know I like will post my tweets on my Instagram story quite a lot, um, just because I know not everyone has Twitter and whatever. Um, there were so many tweets that I like couldn't post on my Instagram because Instagram was so much more strict in terms of especially COVID stuff. YouTube was strict. Facebook was hella strict. So Twitter was like the most loose and there was there's still this massive amount of government collusion like to censor people coming out about Twitter. So like there needs to be a further reckoning with how social media has infringed on people's rights in these last few years and how they've completely gone out of control. I mean, I'm here for it. I know that Elon is looking for a new... Um, CEO or head of Twitter rather, um, which is fine as long as you pick someone who is up for the task. I mean, I'm here for that, but this is going to be the one, like all the Twitter files, like revealing that like the government pushed the banning of Trump from Twitter. Like we all knew that we, we needed to know, we needed confirmation, but we all knew it revealing that they, that, you know, Twitter was blacklisting and, and shadow banning. We all knew that we needed confirmation, but we all knew that. What we need to know more than anything is this COVID stuff. So let's go. This is why like Elon's flawed and like I know that and he's not perfect, but like he is really taking all the slings and arrows. Like the entirety of the establishment is mobilized against him and that's reason enough for me to, to support him at least in this moment. So um, let's go Elon. Like bring everything out about Fauci. I want to fuck it. I can't believe that we lived in a country and this is I have I blame Trump for this in large part. The last year of Trump's presidency was a Fauci presidency. And if you're denying that, you're in denial. You're in a state of denial if you're denying that because that was reality. Trump handed over the presidency to Fauci. Lockdowns, vax mandates, all these stupid inside outside mandates, like all the all the insane totalitarian policies that were passed, rules that were made, were all at the whim of Fauci. He would just wake up, yawn, scratch his nuts and decide if like Americans should be free that day. And it's like, I'm sorry, I don't remember ever voting for Fauci to give him that power. W when did that happen? 
So we need to make sure that doesn't happen again. That like people, the American people don't elect into office, don't have that amount of power. But that's Trump's fault because Trump was listening to everything Fauci said. Anyways, and we're going to get into that, by the way, because there's another Trump story in here. And people get mad that I have critiques of Trump. I don't really care. Anyways, I'm like in a mood today. Canadian school threatens students with suspension if they photograph trans teacher. So this is the big titty uh, teacher from Canada. The big silicone titty. Well, I have silicone titties too, but they're underneath my skin. This is, you know, the fetish gear wearing teacher from Canada. I did a main channel video on this person. Y'all know who this is. Y'all have seen it. It's been viral. So it's amazing that Canada... Oh, Canada is at the point where a teacher can wear sex gear to class, but who's getting in trouble is the students for taking pictures of it. Insane. Did y'all see the pictures? Um, Joey, can you put the pictures up when you're editing this? Like of um, the teacher skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> There's pictures of, as you can see, the big titty <laughs> skydiving. It would have been beautiful if those titties flew off when they were skydiving. This is why I don't go to theme parks. And if I do, my hair is in a strict bun because I am not losing my hair. Y'all know, like, all of this is fake. I'm not losing my hair on a ride. Anyway, um... A Canadian school has allegedly threatened its students with the possibility of suspension if they are caught taking pictures of a now infamous transgender teacher who wears giant prosthetic breasts in class. The transgender teacher known as Kayla Lumiex, I didn't know their, her name was Kayla. Real soft name. Interesting. At Oakville uh, High School in Ontario, made headlines back in September. Yeah, it's like, how is that a thing? But then again, it's like Canada is also letting people like euthanize themselves if they're mentally ill. It's like Canada is on one. Shout out to Canada. Even Steve Bannon thinks Trump's NFT sale is stupid and called for everyone involved to be fired. Let's take a look at this clip of so, Bannon talking about the recent, if y'all remember, just a few days ago. Trump teased that he had some massive announcement. So in the midst of the country being in dire straits, us on the verge of like a civil W and things going to hell, things being more like combative and ugly. And Trump said, I have an announcement coming tomorrow. And all the conservatives I follow were like, oh my God, I wonder what an announcement is. Is he going to announce his VP? Is he going to announce like you know, how he's going to help get us out of this mess. Trump delivers Superman NFTs or him as a superhero. And I just like, okay, don't take my opinion for it. Take Steve Bannon's who put him in the White House the first time. Take Steve Bannon's. Some of the I can't do this anymore. He's one of the greatest presidents in history. But I got to tell you, whoever, but business partner and anybody in the comms team and anybody in Mar-a-Lago, and I love the folks down there, but we're at war. Mm -hmm. They ought to be fired today. You came out with something that's so important, which I still don't think gets to the heart of it. And hey, you don't have three harder cores than Cortez, Bannon, and Seb Gorka. <laughs> so when they're, and we're getting blown up all day on this set. It's like, okay, you know, it's bad when even Bannon is like publicly being like, F that. And I agree, you know, I was very let down, you know, but yeah, actually I wasn't let down because I've been let down by Trump for a while. You know, you have. Ron DeSantis taking on big pharma and investigating the vaccines and banning vax mandates in his state and, you know, doing everything that a leader does. And then simultaneously, the big announcement from Trump is that he has NFTs. And granted, I'm not mad about like a past president selling merchandise, right? Every president does that. Obama sells this. Obama has a Netflix deal. Obama I'm not mad about that. But I was just like the fact that he built it up as some big announcement and he played on people's emotions of like them wanting needing help you know feeling helpless it's like how dare you how dare you 
And that it's like, I saw a lot of conservatives on my timeline finally being like, you know, I like Trump, but this, this is not it. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, like, where were you saying it's not it when he became a vaccine salesman for the past two years? Where were you saying this is not it when he left January 6th prisoners to rot in prison? Like, where were you saying this is not it when he gave his presidency up to Fauci? Like, I don't understand. I really am just not on Trump. I'm really on DeSantis. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't care who's mad about that. Like, I have a right to, you know, have a preference for a president. Like, it's not as if it comes down to like Trump v. Biden, Trump v. Newsom. And I'm like, I'm going to vote for Newsom or Biden. But it's like, if I have a choice now... I'm for DeSantis. DeSantis is taking on Big Pharma. Trump is releasing superhero NFTs. Is there really a comparison? Like, can we just step outside of the collectivism for a second? Can we step outside of the nostalgia for what Trump was in 2016 for just one second to admit that DeSantis is taking on Big Pharma and Trump is selling Superman NFTs? It's just like, they're not the same. They're not the same. I don't know, y'all. Like... I don't want to say I'm black pills here, but like I haven't seen the right in this much disarray in my life. And I know I'm young, but like I just the right's in a bad spot. We just and I, we just have to admit that like we did not come out of midterms how we wanted to. A lot of people on the right are going against each other, which often happens after, you know, a party loses. They start kind of eating each other up and some people can say or perceive me you know preferring DeSantis over Trump is like me going after Trump or whatever I'm not going after Trump I'm voting for Trump if it comes down to Trump v Democrat however I'm allowed to have a preference at this point at any point actually I I can say what the fuck I want I can do what the fuck I want but also it's like I think we need something new. It's like, we'll see what happens. It's not up to me. All right, we're gonna react to some woke TikToks today and we have a theme for the woke TikToks we're reacting today, which is white, (laughs) I'm really going in on the white libs today, aren't I? This, This white guilt, right? These white people who think that whipping themselves in the back and apologizing for being white, it's like, that's like, virtuous or like popping it's or that's not cute it's not okay let's let's watch if by poc stand in the street and scream at the top of their lungs i hate all white people i want all white people to go die die white devil you cracker bitch um that's still not racism are you sure are you sure karen Are you sure, Susie? Because I don't know how you cannot say that as racism, considering racism is defined by hating a race. And if you declare your hatred for a race, that is racism. Like, this is not complicated. This is like one plus one equals two type shit. I I always say people are going to look back at this time period this time period is going to be so fascinating to humanity when it gets its itch together and looks back and is like i cannot believe how effing stupid everyone was they're going to look back at the extreme like obsession with medicalization we got to trans the kids everyone has to be on antidepressants everything's diagnosable nothing's a personality trait everything's a mental illness except for gender dysphoria thinking you're a different gender like you know like get the vaccine everyone get the vaccine like it's going to be upset. It's going to be studies on the obsession with medicalization, the obsession with race and the obsession with gender. But let me not diverge. Let me let um, Sarah continue what she's saying. I don't know why people don't get that, why white people are not comprehending that. That's discrimination. It's an action that's bred out of a prejudice for sure. Justified, arguably. But screaming um, white people should die in my face doesn't change my socioeconomic status. It doesn't change the fact that the criminal justice system was built to serve me and people who look like me. It doesn't change the fact that my skin color won't get me brutalized by the police. It doesn't change the fact that the entire country was built to cater to people who look like me. Screaming I hate white people at me doesn't change the fact that I am dripping with white privilege. You're dripping with white guilt, Miss Girl. 
And you're dripping with embarrassment. I mean, I would be embarrassed. Like, I don't know how you fixed your mouth to sound this dumb. Like, I don't understand. It's like, I know humanity is all about, like, this pendulum is, like, always about excesses, right? It's like the same thing I always say with the trans of. I'm sorry to bring it back to gender, but it's like, that's what I relate to the most, obviously. It's like, I grew up in the time period where, like, I was six years old getting called a faggot. You know what I mean? And it's like, now it's like six years old and like <laughs> going to doctors to figure out how to get a sex change. It's like, is there no middle ground between like, let's be nice to everyone regardless of race or I hate this race, I hate that race. It's like, you don't have to jump from hating one race to hating the other. You can neutralize it, sis, and just be like, listen, everyone's equal. And it's just embarrassing. Like, I, you're embarrassing. As long as I hold the power dynamic, I cannot be subject to racism. Hurt white feelings does not equal racism. This is not a conversation. This is not, a, they always say it's not a conversation because they don't want feedback. They want to just spew their stupid shit and be like, I'm not debating this. I'm turning comments off. This is not a discussion. Well, sis, maybe get the fuck off the internet. Because some loudmouth tranny is going to be watching your video dragging you. It's just like saying you want someone of a certain race dead is racist. This is just basic. Like you. And that shirt. Anyways, here's the next one. Self-hating liberal white woman goes on unhinged rant almost in tears. <laughs> this description from Live of TikTok is funny. All right. You know what? While we're on the topic of how white people are just fucking the world up for everyone, you're not one of the good white people. There are no good white people. There are only anti-racist white people and racist white people. Anti-racism is a lifelong project, and the end goal is not for you to be good. It's for society to be good. Decenter yourself. It's really the projection for me, because, like... It's okay if y'all want to say that y'all are racist. Why do you have to bring all white people into it? Why do you have to... Like, just say you. It's okay for you to just say you. If Miss Melinda wants to come on camera and talk about how she's racist and how she's sorry and she's working on her ways, I actually find that commendable. But for you to fix your mouth, and say that this is all people of your skin complexion that feel this way. Are you nuts? And then it's like also it's like these people don't live in the real world because also this type of person probably lives in the suburbs and bumblefuck nowhere only around white people. If you've ever lived. I grew up in California, baby. I grew up in Northern California. I grew up running through the Bay Area. I've been around every race my entire life. It's very diverse in California. The rumors are true. If you've ever stepped foot into the real world and actually been around people of every race, you understand that every race has its racists. Every single one. You learn that like, you know, people of this race, some of them feel this way about this race. It goes in every direction. I've met Mexicans who have fixed their mouth to say like ignorant stuff about Asians. I've met Asians who fix their mouth to say stupid stuff. I was at a nail salon in LA ran by Asians and like, I would just hear the the nail techs like talking badly about black people. By Miss Claire's logic, does that mean all racist? All all Asians are racist? Make it make sense. Do the work. It's hard. You're gonna get it wrong. But if why do they all talk the same? Like, can we do can we just talk about how they all talk the same? Do the work. Unlearn. What's another one? They always say folks. Why do you, why are leftists obsessed with the word folks? I cannot be the only person who has noticed this. Am I crazy? Can I get a nod from the other room? Have you noticed this? Like they all call each other folks. Trans folks, Latino folks, Latinx folks. Like it's so weird how humans like have segregated language. Because, like, I don't ever see right-wing people using the word folks. Why? Can someone put that in the comment? I, I know I'm, like, off on a tangent. But, like, what? 
But if you are not out there every day actively trying to understand, you're not a good white person. Stop patting yourself on the back. Stop congratulating each other. Stop separating us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are them. We are them. We are the ones shooting up schools. We are the ones raping people. We are the ones enslaving people. We are. We're them. So rape is a white thing now? It do be mostly white people shooting up schools. It do be. However, if you look at gun violence overall, that's not the case. Like. We are the ones enslaving people. We are. We're them. Do they think, does she think slavery is still a thing? Well, slavery is still a thing around the world, let's just say that, but she's clearly talking about the context of America. Does she still think white people have slaves? I don't understand. Kind of like how, um, <laughs> you know what's funny? How like the libs are all celebrating gay marriage right now like it wasn't a thing. <laughs> I've actually been dying. Have you been dying? <laughs> and, like, how on Twitter, like you would think gay marriage just passed. <laughs> like for the first time the way these libs are like oh my god i can get married now it's like it's been legal since 2015 it's the same like carly here thinks that like <laughs> slavery is still a thing <laughs> i just can't like this is mental illness that's like white guilt shit like i don't understand as an educator, I am constantly worried if I am part of the problem. What do I mean by that? Well, this is what I mean. They all speak the same. Folks, do the work, unlearn, part of the problem. <laughs> Why? Like these people run off a of script. And they're very much copy paste thinkers, which we're going to get into in one of the next articles. Well, public education is an institution that upholds lots of problematic systems in our society, like white supremacy and misogyny and colonization, etc. In my role as an educator, I try to undermine that BS. Do you notice how they never give evidence? Like, I'm sorry, if I was ever going to fix my mouth to come up on here and be like, the English language upholds white supremacy. Would you expect me to give an example or would you expect me to just go into the next point? Well, you would expect it if I was dumb enough to say that because they're, it's like, what? I'm going to need an example, Miss Mary. I'm going to need an example. Yes, in my classroom as much as I possibly can. I teach high school English and whoo, the white supremacy runs deep. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at how we write essays. Start with an introduction that includes a thesis. Always cite your sources. Use transition words like however and therefore. These Brenda. Did you just, did you just insinuate that using the word therefore is upholding white supremacy? That containing an introduction and a thesis to your paper is something white people do only? You see how they are projecting, like this is their racism. This is Charlene coming out talking about only white people include theses, so it's race. Like, are you? Am I on a different planet? Am I just not understanding? Am I the idiot? I don't think I am. These are all made up rules. They're arbitrary. They were created by Westerners in power. In linguistic justice, April Baker Bell calls this the language of respectability or the language of power. Which got me thinking, what if I started my school year with a unit honoring how we talk rather than teaching students how to write properly? So this is the start of my series on teaching linguistics in high school. This is where you pin her down. This is how you know that she's just racist. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is her saying that minorities don't speak properly. So teaching them how to write properly is racist. That's what she's saying. That's what Belinda is saying. And it's a problem. Like, 
Speak for yourself. If you want to say you're racist, you say you're racist. And guess what? Because she comes with receipts. Look at this study from Yale. I always point to this study from Yale because, first of all, it's a study from Yale, so argue with it if you want to. White liberals pre present themselves as less competent in interactions with African Americans. So you know how there's a meme about how like people on the right be like, Democrats, liberals are the real racists. There's some truth to that. A new study suggests that white Americans who hold liberal socio-political views use language that makes them appear less competent in an effort to get along with racial minorities. Like, <laughs> there it is. What? <laughs> this means that white libs go around trying to sound less intelligent to relate to people of color. I don't do that. And I'm the racist one, like, I'm the racist one for thinking that minorities can include introductions and a thesis in their papers. Are you kidding me? And Bethany just, listen, we're moving on because I am going to like just lose my mind reacting to these people. And you know what's crazy is you can kind of tell, you know what the equivalent of that for like gender is? It's like when a liberal, here's an example for like trans, when a liberal woman finds out I'm trans or hears that I'm trans or realizes I'm trans, suddenly I'm their gay best friend. <laughs> like, suddenly it's like, oh my God, we should go shopping. Oh my God, we should go get our nails done. Oh my God, do you have any advice on how I should do my makeup? Oh my God, you should totally do my makeup one time. That's how like liberal women react when they find out I'm trans. I become their gay best friend. I become their pet faggot. And it's like, by the way, I can say that word. I got my ass beat my entire childhood hearing that word. I've shed blood over that word. I can use that word. But it's like, yes. Like white liberals project how they actually do feel superior. That's why they cannot handle a minority having different political opinions than them. They cannot handle it. When it comes to like me, they can take like my opinions on trans stuff, you know, are, are similar to some other like right wing content creators, influencers. Not exactly like I'm not as far right on the trans issue as like a Matt Walsh or a Candace Owens or whatever. But I'm, but to them, I am right to them. I'm far right. They can take it from Matt Walsh. They can take it from Ben Shapiro. They can take it from a Miss Candace Owens. Taking it from a trans person, hearing the things that me disagreeing with children transitioning, me disagreeing with trans women in sports, they go nuclear on me because they cannot fathom it. They cannot fathom my, a minority being disobedient to their ideology. This is who they are. We gotta move on. Because <laughs> the white libs are just, are just killing me. I just, I can't. Anyways, I wanted to give an update on, y'all know how in the last episode I talked about Miss Kayla Gogarty and how she wrote the hit piece on me for Media, Media Matters, among other people, saying that I'm anti-LGBT, I'm transphobic, I'm anti-gay for using the word groomer. It's just, I can't. But I wanted to give an update because at the time I recorded that, there was just that one Media Matters hit piece. Since then... Yahoo has picked up that story. Los Angeles Blade, Business Insider. Um, what was the other one? Th there's like three or four more. As you can see, I have the screenshot on the screen. Um, I get Google alerts. So when my name is included in articles, I'm on deck. It, it's very rarely anything positive, by the way. <laughs> like a lot of people are like, oh my God, a Google alert with my name. And for me, it's like, oh great, a fucking Google alert. Let's see what like the libs have to say about me now. Um, but I just wanted to include this to like just show how the media works and how like 
leftists really are copy paste thinkers like all these articles are basically just the media matters article verbatim and they're just passing it off as their own work and the result is like i have to have a hippie saw me on fucking yahoo los angeles blade business sun Saturday, media matters like disgusting and i saw a lot of y'all going over to um miss kayla gogarty's twitter the woman who wrote that article and letting her know how big dumb she is and i appreciated that you know one of the things i appreciate about my audience is like y'all really do have my back like the difficult position of being um public in the way that i am and I've just learned this sort of the hard way over the years is like, I don't need to be in anybody's comment section defending myself. I don't need to be making a million response videos to any person who wants to pay rent that month with Blair White's name. Because it never, it never works, first of all. Like, and it's just tired. So, but that does not mean that I don't notice how y'all will ride for me and y'all will be in those comment sections. The other day I found like, some like random post by some person like making some demented statement about me and like all the comments were just lighting them up and I was like these are these are my girls not just girls but these are my everything you know what I mean it's just I say girls for everyone but it's like I feel that and I love you guys for whatever reason I have managed to and I'm not bragging I'm actually shocked by it I've really managed to have like an audience that is super dedicated through like everything and y'all know there's been a lot of stuff in my career a lot of crazy stuff i'm on hollywood boulevard getting beat up here in a maga hat i'm on candace owens having a screaming match here i'm you know getting in trouble for this and trouble for that it's like wow and like y'all have really just stuck with me and i appreciate it and i will never stop making videos i don't care if you know 20 years from now, there's like 500 people watching. I will always make videos and I will always be here for you guys as well. But anyways, now that I'm done um, blowing smoke up, you guys' ass. <laughs> Super size salon star, Jamie Lopez, dead at 37. Now, this is really sad. And I saw people on social media making, trying to make fun of this or making funny statements. And it's like, you know, I don't like that. I don't like people first of all making fun of people who died i think it's very very tacky you know what i saw that with i saw that with kirstie alley i saw a lot of libs being like really hated how conservative um kirstie alley was kirstie kirstie alley was but uh rest in peace it's like you're disgusting if you have to start a rest in peace with anything negative like maybe just keep your disgusting rat mouth shut but anyways Super sized salon star Jamie Lopez died at 37. Now, as you can see, she is supremely obese and she had a TV show on the We Network, the women's network that's just so supportive of all types of women. Um, dead at 37. Heart complications. Just dropped dead. And you know what? It's so sad that we have a culture that tells women in particular why are women lied to so much you heard me correctly why does the media lie to women so much they'll put men in women's prisons not even trans because you can see they're just taking the word trans at the last second to get into women's prison and they're telling the women hey here's your new roommate it's a woman and it's a dude named jack Going by Jacqueline. Really? You have the you, you're the, the media telling women fat is beautiful. The what was it? The Cosmopolitan article that ran or the, the cover that ran in the middle of the pandemic that was killing mostly fat people. Talking about fat is healthy, fat is beautiful. Are you demented? So this is this is the unfortunate thing. And this is what I always say. It's like you can say fat is beautiful. You can say fat is healthy. You can say health at any size. But when you drop dead at 37, what's up? It's very sad. And it's sad that there was even, you know, a mechanism to give someone a TV show just for being fat. And, and you see that all the time. 
And I'm not talking about the shows that are based on like the people trying to get healthy. This this is not that. This is this is this is a fat pride show. Born in 1985, dropped dead in 2022. That is too young. And the fact was, if she wasn't obese, it wouldn't have happened. Sorry. And I don't understand how the compassionate thing is just to tell her her entire life she's healthy at any size and fat is beautiful. And the evil thing is to say that obesity isn't healthy. That's the evil thing. Fuck you. Stop lying to people. Stop lying to women. I just can't. But I can with this. I love this story. This next one made me happy. This is from the Post Millennial. Democrats online safety expert humiliated in Congress with her own tweets threatening judges. Now, this is a trans woman, perhaps one of the most vile like vile, 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 and I don't say that lightly, trans people on Twitter, like straight up, like sides with sexual predators that are trans or claiming trans on Twitter because she's that much of an ideologue that she would rather side with literal rapists on Twitter because they're trans. Um, and sh she was embarrassed. And this is a glorious clip. Let's watch. Is rhetoric on social media a problem and a threat to our democracy, Mr. Ward? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Ms. Car Caraballo? Yes. Ms. Nomani? Yes. Ms. Tyler? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> another question I have, uh, do you believe that rhetoric targeting officials with violence for carrying out their constitutional duties um, is a threat to democracy, Mr. Ward? Mr. Siegel. Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. Only a few weeks after the attempted attack on a Supreme Court justice on June 25th, one of the witnesses, Alejandra Caraballo, tweeted out the following in response to a decision on abortion overturning Roe v. Wade. And I'll quote directly from the tweet. The six justices who overturned Roe should never no peace again. It is our civic duty to accost them every time they're in public. They are pariahs. Since women don't have their rights, these justices should never have a peaceful moment in public again. I know something about being accosted. The night of January 5th, I was physically accosted on the streets of DC in Navy Yard by a constituent of mine. I fervently blamed rhetoric rhetoric on social media, rhetoric at public events, for being physically accosted. I carry a gun everywhere I go when I am in my district and I'm at home because I know personally that rhetoric has consequences. I've had my car keyed. I've had my house spray painted. I had someone trespass in my house as recently as August. I've been doxxed on social media about where I live. Um, and I've had to add to security everywhere I go, often because I can't afford it. I have to carry my own firearm wherever I go. And um, Alejandra Caraballo also recently tweeted on November 19th, not even a month ago, that the Supreme Court, vested with the judicial power of the United States by our Constitution, stated they are not a legitimate court issuing decisions. And also the Supreme Court is an organ of the far right. So my last question today of Ms. Caraballo, do you stand by these comments, this kind of rhetoric? On Here's where it gets media? good. And do you believe it's a threat to democracy? Thank you, Representative, for the opportunity to clarify and provide context to my tweets. <clears throat> um, I have a question. I like how context suddenly matters. There is no context. <laughs> You could give to these people if they're calling you out for a problematic tweet, a racist tweet, a transphobic tweet. There's no amount of context you could add. I have a question. Is it yes or no? Do you believe your rhetoric is a threat to democracy when you're calling to accost a branch of government, the Supreme Court? I don't believe that's a correct uh, characterization of my tweeted, statements. Though. Did you not tweet that? That you thought that the Supreme Court justices should be accosted? Did what I'm saying is that, that, yes that is no? not an accurate characterization of my statements. On June 8th of this year, a man was arrested near Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home in Maryland. He told law enforcement officers he wanted to kill a Supreme Court justice. He was found um, 
uh, with uh, a knife, with a pistol, two magazines, ammunition, pepper spray, zip ties, a hammer, crowbar, and duct tape. Ms. Carabayo, on page 12 and 13 of your written testimony, you painted concerned parents as having been infiltrated by white nationalists and far-right militia groups, which played a significant role in school board protests. This has not, this has not actually been my experience with concerned parents. In your testimony, you wrote that in Loudoun County, Virginia, unfounded rumors that spread in local parent groups on Facebook about an alleged trans student sexually assaulting a girl in a bathroom led to a firestorm of, of several heated school board protests that descended into violence. But in fact, the perpetrator, it actually turned out, had committed two sexual assaults at two different Loudoun County schools in 2021 and was arrested on October 7th, 2021 by the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. These weren't unfounded rumors, as you suggest. It actually turns out law enforcement had to act because a sexual assault occurred. So given this, I'm assuming that until now you were unaware of, of what happened here and you're gonna update your testimony for the committee. Is that correct? I just love how they absolutely railroaded this hoe. <laughs> like, they really dragged her. I love how they printed out the tweets on the huge cardboard and were walking it in. Like, no, it's, loud, it's live, loud, and in color, honey. You gotta, you gotta answer for this. But, it, but you know what? I truly believe that people like this, people that are on the radical left, such as this person, there really is no such thing as humiliation. They don't understand hypocrisy. They don't care about hypocrisy. They only care about power or losing power, which is why they're so great at winning, by the way. But the thing is, this Alejandra Carabello person is quite possibly, like I said, the most disgusting trans activist on Twitter. Like, the this person defends rapist after rapist after sexual molester after bad actor in the trans community simply on the basis that they're trans, which is disgusting. I mean, like... Just like this person pointed out, like you were defending this Loudoun County situation and there was an actual sexual assault that take, took place. Are you going to correct yourself at all or no? No, they never do. Just like these people all had the back of the wee spa predator. You know what I mean? It's like, imagine being so like tribal. So, an like, in my opinion, people like this are closer to animals in the sense that they are so animalistic, so tribal, so giving in to their, like, animal urges to, like, be in a group and be on a team that, like, it doesn't matter what anyone does if they have the word trans or, or they have, like, the trans label, if they have it, get away with anything in these people's eyes. There's no hypocrisy. There's no wrongdoing. It's like, wow. Unless it's Blair White, of course, because this person has gone after me. Unless it's Blair White. Unless it's Caitlyn Jenner. Unless it's Buck Angel. Well, guess what? Ms. Alejandro Carabello, whatever the fuck. Like, maybe before going after the Blair Whites and the Caitlyn Jenners and the Buck Angels of the world, you start with, like, condemning the rapists and the molesters and the sexual predators that you continuously defend on your social media. And stop threatening violence. Because one thing about it, you know, this is, this is, I don't care how anyone takes this. Maybe step one of transitioning to a woman is being a little bit ladylike and not like threatening violence on people. Because like if the stereotype is that trans women are like violent men imposing on women's spaces, maybe the best course of action to sort of like redirect that stereotype and that misunderstanding is not threatening to assault women. That could be step one. I just can't. Like, it's a wrap for these people. Anyways. This next one, <laughs> we got two trans stories in a row. Haven't had many trans stories in this one, so here's two. Rachel Levine, who y'all know, is really... Um, a villain like Rachel Levine is the Biden hire that is really pushing the trans kid thing. And you would think. Let's just watch this clip. Here's a quote before we get into it. If I had transitioned when I was young, then I wouldn't have my children. I can't imagine a life without my children and then goes in to still push children transitioning. 
And then, you know, my transition was very different because for many reasons, professional and mostly personal reasons, I transitioned over 10 years. Okay? Most people don't take that long to transition. First of all, young people are not willing to do that anymore. And, you know, I mean, I don't know if I was, 50, if I was 15 now, I don't know if I would have taken so long, but, you know, but again, when I was 15, what were you going to say and who would you tell and how would you possibly express that? But, um, so the, the language started about, you know, so that was now 20 years ago um, when I started, when I kind of started this journey. And it was starting to become more in culture in the internet and support groups, etc. cetera. So, um, uh, so I took a long time. Um, I don't regret uh, any of that, any of that. But I have no regrets because if I transitioned when I was young and I wouldn't have my children. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine a life without my children. And so every experience led me to here. And, um, uh, and so how could I regret that? You're sick. And I don't mean because you're trans. You're sick because you are fixing your mouth on stage to say you couldn't imagine your life without your kids. And you are so glad that you took your time to transition because you have your children. But also, children should be able to transition and children need to be on puberty blockers and hormones and sterilize themselves. This is the definition of pulling the ladder up behind you. People love to say I'm doing that. People love to say Blair White got hers and she doesn't care about the rest of the community. Actually, I've dedicated my life to helping the community and, you know, whatever. Um, Rachel Levine wants to sterilize kids and give them drugs that leave them infertile for life. But also wants to sit up on stage talking about how she couldn't imagine her life without her kids. Don't you think those children would like the ability to possibly manifest having a family for themselves to age and to, you know, a time in their life where it feels right for them to have kids. And you know what? One of the things I've often said, you know, the fact that conservatives go after the trans kid thing and the push to put them on these drugs and hormones, you know, I completely agree with, obviously, because I'm on the same page. And so they're right to do that. However, they rarely do it from the correct perspective. They rarely use the correct arguments, in my opinion. Because if you're trying to reach, you're never going to change the minds of the Rachel Levines of the world. They're sick. They're hypocrites. They're crazy. And they're empowered by people who are also sick, hypocrites, and crazy. So people like that, you're never going to convince. But if the goal is to convince people in the middle who just want to be accepting and tolerant of LGBT people, and they're on board with the trans thing for kids strictly because they want to be good people, which is the reason they are, by the way the ones in the middle. They just want to be accepting. They think it's another like gay thing and they think it's the same thing. They don't want to be on the wrong side of history. You need to be saying to these people that what they're actually supporting is sterilization of children. Use those words. Do you think children, ask them the question very specifically, do you think children have the right to sterilize themselves at 13, at 12? Do you think children have the right to consent to permanent bodily changes at 12 or 13? Like, I never hear people talking about the sterilization thing. I don't really understand why. To me, that's a no-brainer. To me, that puts an entire hole in the entire argument. And I wish people talked about it more. Um, because to me, it ends there. It ends there. Like, I cannot have kids now. And I transitioned as an adult, but there was a window in the beginning of my transition to make, if, if I had been thinking that far ahead, to make the decision to freeze my sperm, et cetera. Um, and I still didn't have the wherewithal and the, the forward thinking to do that even as a young adult when I transitioned. So these kids have no idea what they're getting themselves into. That doesn't have to even be said. That's a no-brainer no for us, right? But it's like, tell people who are in the middle, this is what you're supporting. And Rachel Levine, like, I, this is the, the level of cognitive dissonance, the level of just blatant hypocrisy is nuts. Your kids are such a blessing and you're so glad you have them, but also you don't want to give potentially trans children, let's even assume they're really trans, 
Let's even really assume they're born with gender dysphoria. You don't want to give them the opportunity to have kids. Are you sick? You are sick. Anyways, that is all for this episode, you guys. Um, it's been a fun one. I want to film in the mornings more often because I feel like I have like a lot of energy. I love you guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to my main channel. Leave me ratings on Spotify, please. It helps me out so, 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 so much. And I love you guys. I'll see you in the next podcast, the next episode of the Blair White Mother Effin Project.